Oh, oh there we go. There he is. I'm curious um, about general managers and and when you actually take vacation and how long do you take? When does when does Doug Wilson go bye bye for the summer? Uh, probably around August. I mean, right now we've got 43 players here in for our development camp. Um, we've had a little bit more time off this off season than we have in the last 10 or 11 years, so we've tried to use it well. But uh, I'm looking forward to August. Yeah, it's and it's been a busy little off season for you so far. Let's. Let's start off with the coach, because I, I don't think I've uh, we've spoken about the coach with you, and I haven't read too much from you about about Pete DeBoer. What what is it about uh, Pete DeBoer that attracted you to him to be the next coach of the San Jose Sharks? Well, seven years ago when I went through the coaching search, uh, um, Peter was on the uh, the radar. Then he was one of our finalists. Then the only thing he didn't have at that time was NHL experience. And from that point on, in the last seven years, he went to Florida, and then he went to New Jersey. And then we decided that we needed to make a change, and it was just time. Uh, Peter was a guy that came in that was uh, fit a lot of things that we were looking for, very current with how the game is being played, very bright guy, uh, no fear in making really tough decisions. And uh, he came in, and uh, he's very familiar with a lot of our players. Uh, Larry Robinson, who was on our staff, spoke extremely highly of Peter, and uh, uh, it was just a decision that seemed to make sense and fit for us. And he would have coached against players on your team like Brent Burns in the OHL, Logan Couture as well, the Ottawa 67. So there's a, a film, uh, familiarity with those players going back to junior. Um, speaking of junior, if I can just dovetail with the draft here, and I just got the press release moments ago, Doug, congratulations on signing uh, Timo Meyer, your first-round draft pick, to his entry-level contract. He goes in the first, and then you stay in the queue and select Jeremy Waugh, the defenseman, nice skater. Uh, nice little defenseman, offensive force uh, from the QMJHL as well. What did you see in, in your first two picks this year that really turned your head, Timo Meyer and, and Jeremy Waugh? Well, first of all, coming into this draft, we knew it was a really important year for us, and we ended up uh, walking away from the draft with 10 players this year. We'd been accumulating picks the last couple of years, and uh, we like Timo a lot. The size, the strength, the way he plays the game, he goes to the net, he's got, some, uh, he's got a man's body already, but he, uh, he can play on the inside, but he also has got a really good hockey sense that can play with good players and create offensive there. He uh, plays in all three zones. Uh, we really liked him, so we, we felt picking in the top ten we'd get a player like him. Uh, the guy that really excited us that uh, we made a big move on the second day to move up and get Jeremy is we were trying to move up in the first round uh, uh, in about the 20 to 25 range, and we would have taken Jeremy in that place. When mm. it felt that he was available, in the second day, we moved a couple of picks to get the 31 spot. So we feel like we walked away with two first-round picks in these two guys, and uh, it really made our draft for us. Are you finding, you know, just a, a little bit more on Timo Meyer? are you finding now that, you know, Swiss hockey has sort of come of age? And if so, why has it taken so long? Hockey's been, you know, a, a, a great sport in Switzerland for decades. Well, I think they've committed to really uh, high-end coaches. They've got a really good program in place. Uh, I think you're referring to Mirko Mueller, our first-round pick uh, yep. from past years. We think he's going to be a stud. I mean, he's now 6'3", 210, um, and he is, uh, he's ready to be, I think, a, a factor on our team. So I think their program, they've got good people that are running it. Uh, they've had uh, uh, some players that are coming over here and having success. Um, so it just seems to be that cycle that they're in. So we talked a lot about young players, uh, which brings us back to uh, a, a theme with the San Jose Sharks and, and, and how it's maybe changed. Because last offseason, you're talking about a rebuild. And this offseason, it seems more like we're going for it a little bit. A, a, a Joel Ward, a, a Paul Martin. Where are the Sharks now? Are we still in sort of a rebuildy thing or are we more in a going for the cuppy thing right now? Well, we were crystal clear last summer exactly what we said we were going to do. We used the exact same terminology that the Detroit Red Wings used. We expected to be able to uh, rebuild and compete at the same time. We did the exact same thing in 2003. So we uh, last year after the trade deadline, our team was uh, probably the youngest team in the league. It was a 26.3 average on March 2nd playing against Montreal. So we integrated some younger guys into the team. Um, but make no mistake about it, we expect to make the playoffs and compete every year. So coming into this year, um, we had some cap space. We added these 10 players that really positions us well for the future, but we expect to compete to make the playoffs and compete to, uh, uh, to try and compete for the Stanley Cup. So we had cap space, and we were looking for you know, three real important pieces for us. We wanted to secure a number one goalie who could fit for now and for the future, and that's Martin Jones. He's 25 
we know this player well. He's big, competitive, 6'4". We wanted to find a defenseman that would complement uh, you know, the Burns, Blasic, Braun, Dillon, and Mueller. Uh, hopefully a guy that could actually play with Brent Burns and uh, was a left-shot guy. Paul Martin was at the top of the list on that. He'd played all his years with Chris Letang, played in a winning environment, and played with good players. A lot of our players and our coaching staff knew him well. And then we were looking to get a uh, really quality, versatile veteran uh, who hadn't played a lot of games in the league, and that's Joel Ward. He's only played 517 games in this league. Big, physical, can skate. Um, Pete DeBoer, uh, in particular, loves this player. So we think those guys help us both for now, but they also are really good uh, guys that enhance the growth of our younger players that we've added. So um, our, our rebuild was a very simple one, is we want to integrate younger players like Mueller, Hurdle, Nieto, uh, et cetera, um, but also, while well, we have the, the Marlows, the Thorntons, the Burns, the Pavelskis, the Kachurs, all these guys in their prime, we expect to compete to win every year. So if there's any confusion, I'm not sure where that came from because our clarity was the exact same words that Detroit used, and uh, um, that was our plan. Uh, it was a transition year, and now we go forward. Let's uh, let's back up to Martin Jones and Netminder because uh, I believe reading somewhere you said you know he's sort of been on your radar for a couple of years, Doug. And you know you go back to the history of the San Jose Sharks and the Los Angeles Kings. I think that the only time these two teams have ever made a 